Have you ever walked through airport security, heard that beep, and thought, what's actually happening inside that metal detector? Or maybe you've seen someone scanning the beach with a strange-looking device, headphones on, sweeping slowly from side to side like they're on the edge of a discovery. Metal detectors are fascinating machines, and they're more than just tools for treasure hunters or security officers. They're actually built on some pretty clever physics. In this video, we're diving into the world of metal detectors. How do they work? Why they only respond to certain materials and the surprising science happening beneath the surface. Let's get into it, right here, on History of Simple Things. At its core, a metal detector is exactly what it sounds like, a device that detects the presence of metal, but it doesn't see metal the way our eyes see objects. Instead, it uses electromagnetic fields. Think of it like an invisible force reaching into the ground or the space in front of you, searching for something metallic to respond. Most metal detectors have three main parts a control box, a shaft, and a search coil, also known as the loop. The control box holds the brains of the operation, the batteries, the microprocessor, and the circuitry. The shaft connects that to the search coil at the bottom, the part that actually scans the ground. And of course, many detectors also come with headphones so you can hear the beeps and tones without all the background noise. So how does a metal detector actually see metal? It all starts with the search coil. Inside that coil is a transmitter coil, which generates a magnetic field. When you power on the detector and start scanning, the coil sends an electromagnetic wave into the ground. Now, if there's no metal in the area, the wave just keeps moving along uninterrupted. But if it hits a piece of metal, let's say a coin or a lost ring, something interesting happens. That metal object becomes energized by the magnetic field and produces its own small magnetic field in return. This is called an eddy current, a swirling pattern of electric current that flows within the metal. The detector's receiver coil picks up the new magnetic signal from the metal and alerts the user with a tone or a beep. In other words, you're creating a conversation between the detector and the metal. And the beep you hear is your detector saying, Hey, I found something! Not all metal detectors are the same. In fact, there are a few different types and each works a bit differently. The most common one used by hobbyists is the Very Low Frequency Detector, or VLF. This type uses two coils, one to transmit the electromagnetic field and one to receive signals bouncing back from metal. VLF detectors are great at distinguishing between different types of metals, which is useful if you're trying to find coins and skip rusty nails. Then there's pulse induction, or PI, detectors. These are often used in professional settings like airports or security checkpoints. Unlike VLF, PI detectors use a single coil to both send and receive signals in short bursts, or pulses. They're great for detecting deep metals and work well in highly mineralized soil, like wet sand. The trade-off? They're not as good at identifying what kind of metal they've found. Finally, beat frequency oscillation detectors, or BFOs, are more basic and inexpensive. These are often found in beginner-level detectors or novelty toys. They work using two oscillating signals, one in the search coil and one in a reference coil. And when metal is detected, the frequency changes and creates an audible tone. Now you might be wondering, what exactly can a metal detector find? Well, pretty much anything made of metal, from coins and jewelry to tools, bullets, even lost phones. Different metals react differently depending on their size, shape, 
depth and composition. For example, a large aluminum can buried two inches underground will be much easier to find than a tiny gold earring six inches deep. And yes, some people do stumble on incredible treasures. There have been cases where hobbyists discovered ancient coins, Civil War relics, and even long-lost valuables buried for generations. Of course, for every legendary find, there are hundreds of soda tabs and rusty nails. The environment you're searching in also plays a huge role in how well your metal detector works. Soil type can affect signal clarity. Highly mineralized soil, like black sand or areas rich in iron, can interfere with your detector, making it harder to pick up signals. Moisture can also amplify conductivity, making it easier to detect some items after rain. And if you're near power lines, cell towers, or electronic devices, you might experience electromagnetic interference. That's why many detectors include a ground balance feature. This helps cancel out natural interference from the earth and focuses only on detecting actual metal targets. Today's metal detectors are smarter, faster, and more powerful than ever. Many come with digital displays that show target depth, metal type, and signal strength. Some even include GPS tracking so you can mark spots you want to revisit later. And for underwater treasure hunters, there are waterproof models that can be fully submerged to search lakes and shallow ocean floors. There are even detectors that sync with smartphone apps letting users map their finds, analyze data, and share results with other hobbyists. So whether you're a curious beginner or a seasoned detectorist, there's likely a machine out there that fits your style. So next time you hear that familiar beep at the airport or see someone walking slowly across a beach with a detector in hand, you'll know there's a lot more going on than meets the eye. It's not just a random sweep of the ground. It's science, physics, and clever engineering all working together to help us find what's hidden. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.